Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Head Crack After Hours is the first lady of the golden platinum tank. She's in a house with a brand new book called Things My Grandma Told Me, Things My Grandma Showed Me One Time for Mama Mia X. Hey, hey. What's happening, baby? Hi, you doing, sweetheart? I'm doing good. Now, uh, out straight out the gate, gotta say you're coming in here looking like you looked back in 1996, 97, and even younger than that. Like, you look great. Thank you. Like, that's that 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 black don't crack in full effect right there. Well, yeah, black don't crack. You know, that's, you know but there's something, <laughs> though, about Southern women, and I don't know if it's the humidity and the heat, but y'all skin just get preserved so well. Like, there's so many people who look younger than they really are. Like, you know, below the Mason-Dixon line. I don't know if, like, you know, people on the East Coast just stressed out. I don't know what the hell's going on, but y'all be holding it together out there in the boot. Well, we stressed out, too, but we just, you know, you got to blow it out. You got to blow it out and keep living. Got you. So, you know, for those who don't know about, like, New Orleans and even your story, man, like, you know, just, I mean, from everything. I mean, because it doesn't begin or end with your, your time with No Limit Records. There's a lot that came before that. Like, who was Mia X as a child? A rapper. <laughs> and what, and how did you discover hip hop? It, the year was 1979. Um, we were at a party, uh, and the DJ dropped "Rapper's Delight," and I fell in love. My mom had already had the Chic album, okay, so I knew the beat, the baseline. And then when I heard the lyrics, I was like, "This is awesome!" My mom and I we used to write poetry back and forth with each other, and so when I heard poetry to music, I felt I could do it. But then it got better. The sequence dropped. Shout out to Angie Stone. Yo, a lot of people be sleeping Shout on the out fact to that Cheryl Angie Stone was Blondie. Angie B. That's right, one of our first female rap pioneers. When I heard uh, Funk You Up, it was over. At that point, I knew I could do it. So did you write a rhyme that night? I wrote a rhyme the next day. I wrote a rhyme the next day. And I think it was like... So you think that you're an MC, and from the way you rap, I think you claim to be like me, but I am Polo B. <laughs> okay. Polo B was your first rap. Polo name? B was my first rap name. That's kind of dope, actually. Polo. Who, what was the B for? I can't tell you. Oh. I don't tell anybody. So, it, so it's a secret that you gonna you gonna. And it's so lame, but I, I swore it was myself and Manny Fresh, DJ Wop. Shout out to Sporty. She lives right here in Atlanta. She was my my tag team partner in rhyme. We had a group called New York Incorporated. <laughs> we met a guy from Queens. He moved to New Orleans, and he was a DJ. And he rounded all of us up. Manny Fresh's dad was the first mobile DJ in New Orleans. He would pull up, you run up to him, you give him a dollar, he play whatever record you wanted. So Manny was really, really, like, deep into music already. So we became this group, and um, 1984, we did some groundbreaking things. Really? Is there any tapes that is floating around anywhere? You know, I'm hoping most of us lost so much of our precious memorabilia in Hurricane Katrina yeah. because of the water that we got. But every now and then, we find people that have stuff. One time somebody posted a, a poster from uh, Rap Attack 84. We opened up um, for so many people, and then they sent us another ticket from Rap Attack uh, 85, and it was us and Dougie Fresh and the L.A. Dream Team. It was so many people. We opened up for everybody that was popping. Run DMC, LL, Kumo D. Matters of fact, I was into rap so much, I got D's on my report card, and my mom pulled up in our raggedy truck, mm -hmm. and she had dreads, and, and not dreads with the jail. She had dreads. The real joints. Yes. She pulled up and bust in a municipal auditorium and was like, she had D's on her report card and I don't want her to get on the damn stage. <laughs> I was like, please, mama, <laughs> let me just do my rap and then I'll be punished. Just let me do my rap. But um, we did a lot of stuff. We were the first uh, teen group that, that uh, did dances in the Superdome. We did dances in a municipal auditorium. We brokered a deal with what was then Showbiz Pizza Parlor, mm -hmm. and they would shut their spot down at 9 o'clock and clear out the games and let us have dances. That's cool. And, like, in the, it sounds 
adventurous. Well, it, it probably doesn't like really resonate with people now because it's so readily available. Like you don't have to fight to be a part of the culture now because like hip hop is everywhere you go. Right. But there was a point in time where like you really had to set things up and get clearances and and listen to a radio station at three o'clock in the morning just to maybe hear thirty minutes of some rap music. So. Right. You know, like, the stories that people like you have, stories like people like Cool Herd, Crazy Legs, and guys like that, like, there was a struggle. We there was a struggle to, you to this. With a cass- like, okay, you, if, if we were doing this in the 80s right now, kids would be home with a cassette tape, and they would be taping this show so mm-hmm. that they could have it. That's how, that's how precious it was to us. You know, we would literally sit by the radio, and we would tape everything that... We heard. And then when we got into music, like I tell a lot of kids, my son is is doing music now. I'm like, listen, when I did collaborations, we had to do the record, put it in the mail, send it to the other artists, wait for them to do the record, put it in the mail, send it back to us. That's the way everything went. Now, you know, people's like, I'm going to send you the record. Boop. Email. Send you the record back. Boom. Boom. You don't even have to ever meet the artist. Like, we would jump on planes just to go to the studio to vibe with another artist to make the record. Now everything is like, whoa. Yeah. I mean, like, I I love the convenience of being able to do that. But I also feel like some of the the synergy gets lost a little bit. Because sometimes, you know, you got to work off that vibe, you know? You got to fit. You got to... Sometimes you'll start off saying you're doing one song, but then when you come together with somebody else, the whole vibe might change and you'll end up doing something else. And that happened a lot of times. Um, When I worked with Fat Joe and and Snoop, we were going to do one song, but when we got together, we were talking about where we were from. You know, Snoop's from the West and Joe's from the East and I'm from the South. So then we said, well, let's do What's Your Point? So we we did a record, you know, talking about everywhere we were from, and it it just happened through a conversation. So I think, you know, when we're together, you can kind of vibe better, come up with new ideas, you know. But we like the boop. We like that, too. Yeah, but, you know, ain't nothing like building. (laughs) Like, So what was your most fun studio session that you had? You know, like, you know, who was, like, fun to vibe with? Um, you know, everybody. Like, I never had any bad sessions, uh... I was really happy when Foxy Brown came down um, to the studio because I had never met her, but I loved the Il Nana album. Yeah. And so when she came down, she was so nice um, and so sweet, and we ended up doing a song, and then she was like, when I do my album, you're going to do one with me too? And so then we did the BWA that was a good moment because a lot of times ladies don't get a chance to hook up and vibe it's and make very the rare. music. Right. So I, I've been blessed. I've been blessed for every woman that I've worked with. It's been all love. Man. So like sitting and watching the game where it is now, you know, knowing that you got some bricks on that road that paved it to where it go. Are you are you happy where everything is? I am. I would like to see more unity amongst the females because um we have so much more to bring to the table other than just bars and, and for some of them, you know, looks and body. We have so much more, so many more ideas. You know, like I was saying, shout out to Angie Stone. What people don't know, Angie was doing a lot of writing and arra- arranging for the Sugar Hill Gang. And that happens a lot with women, just like myself. I know they, they always talk about girls having ghost writers, but, you know, for myself, I was like, I make the hook. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, you need to change that. I'm going to fix that for you. And people don't know that, you know, about us. But we have so much more to bring to the table, so many ideas, so much creativity. So I would like to see a little more unity so that the, the young people coming up in, in the game can get the benefit of all that hip-hop has to offer because it's not just rhymes. And I, and I, you know, suggest that any artist who is working on music have some women around you because nine times out of ten, like, if you're making music, you're making music for women right. that women or that women can appreciate on some level. Right. So you guys are like the ultimate litmus test to find out if something really sounds good. Right. We we are the ones that actually buy records and buy concert tickets. And y'all fan out and like really latch on to we the stay energy loyal. of the thing. When we like an artist, we like an artist. That's another thing. That's a little confusing with the times right now. I know this is pretty um, microwavable. Mm. I watch um, 
artists come and go, and I watch the support flip-flop. I just feel so blessed. The last time I put a record out was 20 years ago, literally. I still do concerts. I still get people to support me, and I still feel the love. But I don't see that with other artists. You know, I, they'll have a hot record in the summer, and then people are like, oh, they irrelevant. Oh, who? And then we celebrate the fact that they fell off. Yeah, and I, I really don't understand that that right there because, um, you know, I, I'm going to go see Big Daddy Kane wherever he's at because I'm still a fan. And he's going to put on a clinic. Rock, and he's going to rock it out. So, you know, I want, um, I want the fans to be more in tune with the artists they select and, and, and hang with them, you know, and the artists we have to deliver mm. so that our fans can hang with us. Facts.